Hello and welcome to another episode of my F123 Mighty Career Mode. We're here today for the Monaco Grand Prix and Round 3 of Season 2. We come into this race after a very disappointing result last time out in Australia and we're looking to Monaco to find some form again. We've been quick round Monaco in the past and we got our first points here as a team last season. So if we round the final corner for our first run in qualifying and we go second fastest on the same set of tyres we've gone even quicker purple first sector purple middle sector we run the final corner a small little lock up we go up to the line we cross it and it's provisional pole position for us then looking to make it three in a row here we go into the first corner and now can we find even more time i will leave you to watch the rest So we come up to the line, we've found seven tenths and we're going to start the race on pole position. Let's go to the race. Formula One returns to Monte Carlo once again today, home to the world famous Monte Carlo Casino, first opened in 1863, and of course a certain road race first held in 1929. There is no greater an occasion, no more valuable a win than the Monaco Grand Prix. We're on the French Riviera once more this weekend at the two mile long Circuit de Monaco. The cars will climb around 40 metres up the hill past the casino and then descend towards the harbour through sector two. It's a very short run from pole position to the first of 19 corners, so don't expect to see much overtaking here today. Off the back of a fantastic qualifying session, it's time to see how our starting grid looks like for today's race. Brown lines up on pole position, and Yuki Tsunoda completes the front row. Looking down the rest of the grid, we have Russell, Hamilton, Leclerc, Fernando Alonso, Ocon, Verstappen, Norris, Perez, Bottas, Gasly, Sainz, Oscar Piastri, Stroll, Magnussen, Joe, De Vries, Liam Lawson, Fittipaldi, Albon and Logan Sargent. Which of these talented drivers will come out on top today? Let me ask you about Aston Martin. And we welcome Anthony Davidson to the commentary box once again. And we've got new aero reg changes. It's going to take some time to work these out. There are a few downcast looks within the team this weekend. I think they've been hit fairly hard by the new regs. But this is only the first step down a long road of development. And even if they don't maximise their points today, there are plenty more up for grabs this season. So we're here on the grid then, it's going to be a one stop for us, starting on the medium, going to the hards. The softs aren't going to last, to do soft to medium, so we're doing medium to hard. Let's see how that goes. It's another one, two for us in a row, back to back with Australia. Three pole positions in a row for us as well. So let's see what happens. It's the five red lights, come on for the Monaco Grand Prix, it's lights out and away we go and we've got a fairly decent start as we head down into turn one Yuki's coming under pressure from George Russell side by side as we go up the hill we pull a small gap going through turn one Yuki has fended off the Mercedes of George Russell is still the two Lamborghinis followed by the two Mercedes as we head now towards Mirabeau it looks like many places haven't been gained from those behind now into the lone hairpin the best camera angle on the Formula 1 calendar as they all snail through now trying not to 
ram into each other as they go around the slowest corner on the Formula One calendar. You can see there the two Williams at the back as we skip now all the way on to lap eight. We were so quick on these medium tyres. You can see the gap we've pulled out to Yuki. Four and a half seconds as we skip on to lap 19 now. We were still extending. And nine and a half seconds is the gap now as we nearly drop it into the barrier entering the pits to make our one and only stop of the day we time the, the pit stop in to perfection and now we put on our tyres to get us to the end of this Grand Prix now 20 laps to go as we round the pits then out of the pits and we haven't managed to find ourselves a gap unfortunately a slightly bit quicker pit stop could have maybe got us out ahead of the Aston Martin of Alonso but we dispatched him fairly quickly there it, we made sure it wasn't gonna take too long as now this is Yugi one lap later coming out of the pits into the pit rather he puts on the hard tyres he's put a small gap on the Mercedes as well but he just couldn't match our pace and we are miles up the road from Yuki he comes out is he going to beat out the Mercedes or George Russell is he in the, of Hamilton rather and he has Hamilton's beat out his teammate this is Carlos Sainz on lap 31 the Ferrari engine has exploded there and he is out of the Monaco Grand Prix on to lap 32 now we were still trying to find time we light at the rear tyres and we get blocked by the Alphatari on Fittipaldi and now lap 32 towards the end this is Lance Stroll Lance Stroll's engine has gone as well now one Mercedes one Ferrari engine going and two DNFs then for two drivers and two laps is all gone wrong as we skip now all the way on to the final lap of the Grand Prix we have pulled a 19 second gap on Yuki Tsunoda our teammate and we round the final corner it's the one they all want to win we win the Monaco Grand Prix It's the one that everybody wants to win, and they've only gone and done it. What a fantastic result here. Tell me, Anne, how do you think they were able to deliver such an incredible result today? Well, they certainly stood out as a driver with tons of confidence on the track. I think their ability to keep their cool, even during some of the more hectic parts of the race, meant they were able to capitalize on the mistakes of other drivers, giving them the opportunity to make their way to the top spot with ease. Here comes your top three, making their way down to the podium for what can only be described as a fantastic day for Formula One. So I think we can call that a dominance win. Winning the race by 19 seconds. I don't think I've driven so well on the game this year. We were just so quick and Yuki can live with our pace. And what a way to bounce back from Australia. A 1-2 for us as well as a team up first. 1-2 as well. Also for the championship. Okay, the Mercedes third and fourth. We still gained some fairly decent points though on them. And you can see the two DNFs there of Stroll 
and Sainz late on in the Grand Prix unfortunately for them. Into the championship now and we have closed the gap to five points behind George Russell. I don't want to say this too early and I've been biting my tongue because I don't want to jinx it. We've now had three races on three very different types of racetrack. Bahrain being your typical racetrack, Australia being your fast street track and here in Monaco being your twisty high downforce track. So maybe just maybe we have got a very competitive car this year. Maybe over the next 13 races we can take it to Mercedes in the championship after our disappointing weekend in Australia. We re-jump Ferrari. Ferrari only having one car in the race in the end after Sainz's retirement. So also Red Bull now third. They had a very strong testing in Red Bull but they just haven't had it this season and I really don't know why and it looks like Max is going to have a very big challenge if he wants to make it a fourth consecutive title but that's been your Monaco Grand Prix your typical Monaco Grand Prix in the end but I hope you enjoyed it we head to Spain next for the Spanish Grand Prix and we'll be looking to take this form into that one goodbye